It was the hour, when of diurnal heat no relics chafed the cold beams of the moon, or powered thee by earth, or planetary sway of Saturn, and the geomancer sees his greater fortune up the east ascend, where grey dawn checkers first the shadowy cone, when for me in my dream a woman shape there came, with lips that stammered, eyes aslant, distorted feet, hands maimed, and color pale. I looked upon her, and as sunshine cheers limbs numbed by nightly cold, e'en thus my look unloosed her tongue, next in brief space her form decrepit rice erect, and faded face with love's own hue illumed. Recovering speech she forth with warbling such a strain began, that I, how loath sore, could scarce have held attention from the song. I, thus she sang, I am the siren, she, whom mariners on the wide sea are wildered when they hear, such fullness of delight the listener feels. I from his course Ulysses by my lay enchanted drew. Poor frequents me once parts seldom, so I charm him, and his heart contented knows no void. Or ere her mouth was clossed, to shame her at her side appeared a dame of semblance holy. With stern voice she uttered, Say, O Virgil, who is this? Which hearing, he approached, with eyes still bent toward that goodly presence, th other sazed her, and, her robes tearing, opened her before, and showed the belly to me, whence a smell, exhaling loathsome, whacked me. Round I turned mine eyes, and thus the teacher, at the least three times my voice hath called thee. Rise, be gone. Let us the opening find where thou mayst pass. I straightway rose. Now day, poured down from high, filled all the circuits of the sacred mount, and, as we journeyed, on our shoulders smote the early ray. I followed, stooping low my forehead, as a man, o'er charged with thought, who bends him to the likeness of an arch, that midway spans the flood, when thus I heard, Come, enter here, in tones so soft and mild, as never met the ear on mortal strand. With swan-like wings to spread in pointing up, who thus had spoken marshalled us along, where each side of the solid masonry the sloping, walls returned, then amovied his plumes, and fanning us, affirmed that those who mourn are blessed, for that comfort shall be theirs. What aileth thee, that still thou looks to earth? Began my leader, while th angelic shape a little over us his station took. New vision, I replied, hath riced in me surmising strange and anxious doubts, whereon my soul intent allows no other thought or room or entrance. Hast thou seen, said he, that old enchantress, her, whose wiles alone the spirits o'er us weep for? Hast thou seen how man may free him of her bonds? Enough. Let thy heel spurn the earth, and thy rice can fix on the lure, which even as eternal king whirls in the rolling spheres. As on his feet the falcon first looks down, then to the sky turns, and forth stretches eager for the food, that woos him thither, so the call I heard, so onward, far as the dividing rock gave way, I journeyed, till the plain was reached. On the fifth circle when I stood at large, a race appeared before me, on the ground all downward lying prone and weeping sore. My soul hath cleaved to the dust, I heard with sighs so deep, they well nigh choked the words. O ye elect of God, whose penal was both hope and justice mitigate, direct to our ds the steep rising our uncertain way. If ye approach secure from this our doom, prostration, and would urge your course with speed, see that ye still to rightward keep the brink. So them the bard besought, and such the words, beyond us some short space, in answer came. I noted what remained yet hidden from them, thence to my liege's eyes mine eyes I bent, and he, forth with interpreting their suit, beckoned his glad assent. Free then to act, as please me, I drew near, and took my stand o'er that shade, whose words I late had marked. And, spirit. I said, in whom repentant tears mature that blessed hour, when thou with God shalt find acceptance, for a while suspend for me that mightier care. Say who thou wast, why thus ye grovel on your bellies prone, and if in aught ye wish my service there, whence living I am come. He answering spake the cause why he then our back toward his cope reverses, shalt thou know, but me know first the successor of Peter, and the name and title of my lineage from that stream, that twixt Chiavery and Siestri draws his limpid waters through the lowly glen. A month and little more by proof I learnt, with what a weight that robe of Esoverenti upon his shoulder rests, who from the mire would guard it, that each other far dell seems but feathers in the balance. Late, alas! was my conversion, but when I became Rome's pastor, 
I discerned at once the dream and cousinage of life, saw that the heart rested not there, and yet no proud or height lit on the climber, wherefore, of that life no more enamored, in my bosom love of purer being kindled. For till then I was a soul in misery, alienate from God, and covetous of all earthly things, now, as thou sayest, here punished for my doting. Such cleansing from the taint of avarice do spirits converted need. This mount inflicts no dire penalty. E'en as our eyes fastened below, nor air to loftier climb were lifted, thus hath justice leveled us here on the earth. As avarice quenched our love of good, without which is no working, thus here justice holds us prisoned, hand and foot chained down and bound, while heaven's just lord shall please. So long to tarry motionless outstretched. My knees I stooped, and would have spoke, but he, ere my beginning, by his ear perceived I did him reverence, and what cause, said he, hath bowed thee thus? Compunction, I rejoined. An inward awe of your high dignity. Up, he exclaimed, brother. Upon thy feet arise, ere not, thy fellow servant I, thine and all others, of one sovereign power. If thou hast ever marked those holy sounds of gospel truth, nor shall be given ill marriage, thou mayst discern the reasons of my speech. Go thy ways now, and linger here no more. Thy tarrying is a let unto the tears, with which I hasten that whereof thou spackst. I have on earth a kinswoman, her name Ologia, worthy in herself, so will example of our house corrupt her not, and she is all remaineth of me there.